The master race German, Herrenrasse, also referred to as Herrenvolk, master people, is a concept in Nazi ideology in which the putative Nordic or Aryan races, predominant among Germans and other Northern European peoples, are deemed the highest in racial hierarchy. Members of this alleged master race were referred to as Herremenschen, master humans. The Nazi official Alfred Rosenberg believed that the Nordic race was descended from Proto-Aryans, who he believed had prehistorically dwelt on the North German plain and who had ultimately originated from the lost continent of Atlantis. The Nazis declared that the Nordics now referred to as the Germanic peoples, or Aryans as they sometimes called them, were superior to all other races. The Nazis believed they were entitled to expand territorially. This concept is known as Nordicism. The actual policy that was implemented by the Nazis resulted in the Aryan Certificate, the one form of the official document that was required by the law for all citizens of the Reich was the Lesser Aryan Certificate, Kleiner Ariernischweiss, which could be obtained through an Ahnenpass, which required the owner to trace her or his lineage through baptism, birth certificates or certified proof thereof that all grandparents were of Aryan descent. The Slavs along with Gypsies and Jews, were defined as being racially inferior and non-Aryan Untermenschen, and were thus considered to be a danger to the Aryan, or Germanic master race. According to the Nazi secret hunger plan and general plan Ost, the Slavic population was to be removed from Central Europe through expulsion, enslavement, starvation, and extermination, except for a small percentage who were deemed to be non-Slavic descendants of Germanic settlers, and thus suitable for Germanization. Historical background The Übermensch German, Overman, or Superman, is a concept in the philosophy of German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. He posited the Übermensch as a goal for humanity to set for itself in his 1883 book Thus Spoke Zarathustra German, also Sprach Zarathustra. However, Nietzsche never developed the concept on racial grounds. Instead, the Übermensch seems to be the ideal aim of spiritual development more than a biological goal." Nazism distorted the real meaning behind the concept to fit its «master race» view. By the late 19th and early 20th centuries, it was posited that the Indo-Europeans then generally also referred to as Aryans made up the highest branch of humanity because their civilization was the most technologically advanced. This reasoning simultaneously intertwined with Nordicism which proclaimed the Nordic race as the purest form of said Aryan race. Today, this view is regarded as scientific racism because it contradicts racial equality by positing that one race is superior to all other races. Eugenics Eugenics came to play a prominent role in this racial thought as a way to improve and maintain the purity of the Aryan master race. Eugenics was a concept adhered to by many thinkers in the 1910s, 1920s, and 1930s, such as Margaret Sanger, Marie Stopes, H. G. Wells, Woodrow Wilson, Theodore Roosevelt, Madison Grant, Emile Zola, George Bernard Shaw, John Maynard Keynes, John Harvey Kellogg, Linus Pauling, and Sidney Webb. Human dog and pony show. Type events organized by advocates of eugenics, where men and women appeared on stage in swimsuits in eugenic competitions only Nordic Aryans were allowed to enter to be evaluated for their physical and mental qualities as marriage partners, were common throughout Europe and North America in the 1920s. The Nazis took this concept to a further extreme by establishing a program to systematically genetically enhance the Nordic Aryans themselves through a program of Nazi eugenics, based on the eugenics laws of the U.S. state of California, to create a super race. Hierarchy <inaudible> 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 The modern concept of the master race in general derives from 19th century racial theory, which posited a hierarchy of races based on darkness of skin color. This 19th century concept was largely initially developed by Count Joseph Arthur de Gobineau. 
Gobineau's basic concept, as further refined and developed in Nazism, places the black indigenous Australians and equatorial Africans at the bottom of the hierarchy, while the white northern and western Europeans consisting of Germans, Swedes, Icelanders, Norwegians, Danes, British, Irish, Dutch, Belgian and northern French were at the top, olive-skinned white southern Europeans consisting of the southern French, Portuguese, Spaniards, Italians, Romanians, and Greeks, i.e., those of what is called the Mediterranean race. Race, which was regarded as another sub race of the Caucasian race in the upper middle ranks, and those of the Semitic race and Hamitic race, supposed sub races of the Caucasian race in the middle ranks. It was because the Jews, being Semites, were clever that they were so dangerous they had their own plan for Jewish world domination, a conspiracy that had to be opposed by all thoughtful Aryans, declared the Nazis. Slavs such as Poles and Russians were not considered Aryans, and those of the Mongoloid race including its offshoots the Malayan race, the American Indian race and mixed-race people such as Eurasians, the Bronze Mestizos, Mulattoes, Afro-Asians, and Zambos in the lower middle ranks. However, the Japanese were considered honorary Aryans. In attempting to scientifically prove the racial inferiority of Slavs, German and Austrian racial scientists were forced to gloss over their findings which consistently found that early Slavs were dolicocephalic and fair-haired, i.e., Nordic, while the South Slavic, Dinaric, sub-race was often viewed favorable. Nazis used the term, Slavic race, and considered Slavs to be non-Aryan the concept of a Slavic, Untermensch went alongside the political goals, and was particularly aimed at Poles and Russians. Germany's ultimate goal was to realize their Drang Nach Austin to conquer in Europe, Ukraine's Chernozem Black Earth soil being a particularly desirable zone for colonization by the Herenvolk master race. In relation to the Nazis' racial purity, author and historian Lucy Davidovich wrote, In the hierarchy of Nazi racism, the Aryans were the superior race, destined to rule the world after the destruction of their racial arch-foe, the Jews. The lesser races over whom the Germans would rule included the Slavs—Poles, Russians, Ukrainians. Hitler's racial policy with regard to the Slavs, to the extent that it was formulated, was depopulation. The Slavs were to be prevented from procreating, except to provide the necessary continuing supply of slave laborers. Master race in the United States In the United States, the concept of «master race» arose within the context of master-slave race relations in the slavery-based society of historical America, particularly in the South in the mid-19th century. It was based upon both the experience of slavery and the pseudo-scientific justifications for racial slavery, but also on the relations between whites in the South and North, particularly during the American Civil War. Benjamin W. Lee, representing Virginia in the United States Senate, said in a speech of January 19, 1836, There has been in Virginia as earnest a desire to abolish slavery as exists anywhere at this day. It commenced with the Revolution, and many of our ablest and most influential men were active in recommending it, and in devising plans for the accomplishment of it. The legislature encouraged and facilitated emancipation by the owners, and many slaves were so emancipated. The leaning of the courts of justice was always in favorum libertatis. This disposition continued until the impracticability of effecting a general emancipation, without incalculable mischief to the master race, and danger of utter destruction to the other, and the evils consequent on partial emancipations, became too obvious to the legislature, and to the great majority of the people, to be longer disregarded. The Oxford English Dictionary records that William J. Grayson used the phrase, Master Race, in his poem The Hireling and the Slave, 1855 where the phrase denotes the relation between the white masters and Negro slaves. By 1860 Virginian author George Fitzhugh was using the challenging phrase, master race, which soon came to mean considerably more than the ordinary master-slave relationship. Fitzhugh, along with a number of Southern writers, used the term to differentiate Southerners from Northerners, based on the dichotomy that Southerners were supposedly descendants of Normans, Cavaliers whereas Northerners were descendants of Anglo-Saxons, Puritans. In 1861, the Southern press bragged that Northern soldiers would encounter a master race, and knowledge of this fact would cause Northern soldiers' knees to tremble. The Richmond Whig in 1862 proclaimed that 
the master race of this continent is found in the southern states." And in 1863 the Richmond Examiner stated that, "...there are slave races born to serve, master races born to govern." In the works of John H. Van Every, a northern supporter of the Confederacy, the term was interchangeable with white supremacy, notably in white supremacy and Negro subordination, or, Negroes a subordinate race and so-called slavery its normal condition 1861. In subgeneation, the theory of the normal relations of the races, an answer to miscegenation 1864, Van Every created the words, subgen, to describe what he considered to be the inferior races, and subgeneation to describe the normal relation of such inferior races to whites, something which he considered to be the very cornerstone of democracy. But these words never entered the dictionary. The racial term Untermensch originates from the title of Klansman Lothrop Stoddard's 1922 book The Revolt Against Civilization, The Menace of the Underman. It was later adopted by the Nazis from that book's German version Der Kulturumsters, Die Drohung des Untermenschen An advocate of the U.S. immigration laws that favored Northern Europeans, Stoddard wrote primarily on the alleged dangers posed by colored peoples to white civilization, with his most famous book The Rising Tide of Color Against White World Supremacy in 1920. Alfred Rosenberg was the leading Nazi who attributed the concept of the East European underman to Stoddard. As the Nazi party's chief racial theorist, Rosenberg oversaw the construction of a human racial ladder that justified Hitler's racial and ethnic policies. Referring to Russian communists, Rosenberg wrote in his Der Mythos des 20. Jarunderts 1930 that this is the kind of human being that Lothrop Stoddard has called the underman. Den Lothrop Stoddard ALS Untermenschen Bezeichnete. Topic Nordicism. The origins of the Nazi version of the theory of the master race were in the 19th century racial theories of Count Joseph Arthur de Gobineau, who argued that cultures degenerated when distinct races mixed. It was believed at this time that the peoples of southern Europe were racially mixed with non-European Moors from across the Mediterranean Sea, while the peoples of northern Europe and western Europe remained pure. Proponents of the Nordic theory further argued that Nordic peoples had developed an innate toughness and determination due to the harsh, challenging climate in which they evolved. The philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer was one of the earliest proponents of a theory presenting a hierarchical racial model of history, attributing civilizational primacy to the white races, who gained their sensitivity and intelligence by refinement in the rigorous North. The highest civilization and culture, apart from the ancient Indians and Egyptians, are found exclusively among the white races, and even with many dark peoples, the ruling caste or race is fairer in color than the rest and has, therefore, evidently immigrated, for example, the Brahmins, the Incas, and the rulers of the South Sea Islands. All this is because necessity is the mother of invention because those tribes that emigrated early to the north and there gradually became white, had to develop all their intellectual powers and invent and perfect all the arts in their struggle with need, want and misery, which in their many forms were brought about by the climate. This they had to do in order to make up for the parsimony of nature and out of it all came their high civilization. Despite this, he was adamantly against differing treatment of races, was fervently anti-slavery, and supported the abolitionist movement in the United States. He describes the treatment of our innocent black brothers whom force and injustice have delivered into the slave master's devilish clutches as belonging to the blackest pages of mankind's criminal record. Hans Frank, Hitler's personal lawyer, stated that Hitler carried a copy of Schopenhauer's book The World as Will and Representation with him wherever he went throughout World War I. The postulated superiority of these people was said to make them born leaders, or a master race. Other authors included Guido von Liszt, his associate Lanz von Liebenfels, and the British-born German racial theorist Houston Stuart Chamberlain, all of whom felt that the white race in general and Germanic peoples in particular were superior to others, and that given the purification of both the white race and the German people from the other races which were polluting. Them, a new millenarian age of Aryan god men would arrive. Nazi policy stressed the superiority of the Germanic Übermenschen superhuman Nordic race, a sub race of the white Caucasian race European population defined by anthropometric models of racial difference. 
The Nordic race was said to comprise only the Germanic peoples, Scandinavians and the rest of the Nordic countries Norwegians, Swedes, Danes, Icelanders, and Faroese, ethnic Germans including Austrians, Banat Swabians, as well as Sudeten, Baltic and Volga Germans, Alemannic Swiss, Liechtensteiners, Luxembourgers, the Dutch, Flemings, Afrikaners, Frisians and the English. The Nazi racial theorist Hans F. K. Gunther first defined Nordic thought in his programmatic book Der Nordische Gedanke unter den Deutschen. The fact that Germans were not purely Nordic was acknowledged by Gunther in his book Rassenkunde des Deutschen Volkes 1922, Racial Science of the German People, in which he described the German people as being made up of all five of his European racial categories, Nordic, Mediterranean, Dinaric, Alpine, and East Baltic. Most official Nazi comments on the Nordic race were based on Gunther's works, and Alfred Rosenberg presented Gunther with a medal for his work in anthropology. Although the physical ideal of these racial theorists was typically the tall, fair-haired and light-eyed Nordic individual, such theorists accepted the fact that a considerable variety of hair and eye color existed within the racial categories they recognized. For example, Adolf Hitler and many Nazi officials had dark hair and were still considered members of the Aryan race under Nazi racial doctrine, because the determination of an individual's racial type depended on a preponderance of many characteristics in an individual rather than on just one defining feature. Hitler and Himmler planned to use the SS as the basis for the racial regeneration of Europe following the final victory of Nazism. The SS was to be a racial elite chosen on the basis of pure. Nordic qualities, Giuseppe Sergi (1841–1936) was an Italian anthropologist of the early 20th century, best known for his opposition to Nordicism in his books on the racial identity of ancient Mediterranean peoples. His concept of the Mediterranean race became important to the modeling of racial difference in the early 20th century. Topic: <laughs> Aryanism and Nazism. The term Aryan derives from the Sanskrit word Rhea, which derived from Arya, the original Indo-Iranian autonym. Also, the word Iran is the Persian word for land, place of the Aryan see also Iranian peoples. Following the ideas of Gobineau and others, the Nazi theorist Alfred Rosenberg determined that these people, who, he claimed, were originally from Atlantis, were a dynamic warrior people who dwelt in northern climates on the North German plain in prehistoric times, from which they migrated southeast by riding their chariots, eventually reaching Ukraine, Iran, and then India. They were supposed to be the ancestors of the ancient Germanic tribes, who shared their warrior values. Rosenberg claimed that Christianity was an alien Semitic slave morality which was inappropriate for the warrior Aryan master race and he thus supported a melange of aspects of Hindu Vedic and Zoroastrian teachings both of these religions having been organized by Aryans, along with pre-Christian European Odinistic paganism, which he also considered distinctively Aryan in character. In Nazi Germany, the Nuremberg race laws of 1935 forbade sexual relations and marriage between an Aryan and a non-Aryan in order to maintain the purity of the Aryan race. Such relations became a punishable crime known as Rassenschand or racial shame. The League of German Girls was particularly regarded as instructing girls to avoid Rassenschand, which was treated with particular importance for young females. Aryans found guilty of this crime could face incarceration in a concentration camp, while non-Aryans could face the death penalty. The Nazis recognized the Germanic people as the master race, and several policies were implemented in order to improve and maintain the Germanic Nordic Übermenschen Aryan master race, including the practice of eugenics. In order to eliminate defective citizens, the T4 euthanasia program was administered by Karl Brandt in order to rid the country of the intellectually disabled or those born with genetic deficiencies, as well as those deemed racially inferior. Additionally, a program of compulsory sterilization was undertaken which resulted in forced operations being performed on hundreds of thousands of individuals. Many of these policies are generally seen as being related to what eventually became known as the Holocaust. The Nazis also undertook measures to increase the number of Nordics in Germany. The Lebensborn program was only open to German women who fit the Nordic profile. During the Nazi occupation of Poland, the Nazis took young Nordic-looking Polish children who were classified as being descended from ethnic German settlers in order to determine whether or not they were racially valuable. 
If that were the case, the young children were taken back to these Lebensborn houses so they could be raised as Germans. In Nazi Germany, there existed an official document which certified that its owner was Aryan, the so called Aryan certificate that could also be obtained by citizens of other countries. It states in the section Racial Tenet. In line with National Socialist thinking which does full justice to all other peoples, there is never the expression of superior or inferior, but alien racial admixtures. For the Greater Aryan Certificate people had to prove that reaching back to January 1, 1800, "...none of their paternal nor their maternal ancestors had Jewish or colored blood." SS officers had to prove this reaching back to 1750. Mediterranean race The fact that the Mediterranean race was responsible for the most important of ancient Western civilizations was a problem for the promoters of Nordic superiority. According to Giuseppe Sergi, the Mediterranean race was the greatest race of the world and was singularly responsible for the most accomplished civilizations of ancient times, including those of Mesopotamia, Persia, Egypt, Greece, Phoenicia, Carthage, and Rome. The Mediterranean race was also a major influence to the outside world in the modern era. During the 16th century, Spain and Portugal established the first global empires in Western history, setting both nations in the highest level of political and economic powers in Europe. C. G. Seligman also stated that it must, I think, be recognized that the Mediterranean race has actually more achievements to its credit than any other race, since it is responsible for by far the greater part of Mediterranean civilization, certainly before 1000 BC and probably much later, and so shape not only the Aegean cultures, but those of Western as well as the greater part of Eastern Mediterranean lands, while the culture of their near relatives, the Hamitic pre-dynastic Egyptians, formed the basis of that of Egypt. Egypt. The Nazis explained this by pointing out that the original Latins and Greeks were Indo-European Nordic tribes that had migrated into Italy and Greece, respectively. The Nazis also claimed that the Spanish and Portuguese empires were examples of Nordic power since, at the time, their governments were run by the descendants of the Germanic Visigoths that had invaded earlier. However, they did admit that the masses during these four civilizations were Mediterranean and Germans of all European races were classified as Aryan. <inaudible> Master race in fiction Aryan master race ideology was common throughout the educated and literate strata of the Western world until after World War II. Such theories were commonplace in early 20th century fantasy literature. In the 1920s and 1930s, the original Buck Rogers stories and newspaper cartoons, Buck Rogers, in his adventures in the 25th century that take place on Earth, fights for Aryan Americans from the liberated zone around Niagara, New York, against the Red Mongol Empire, a Chinese empire of the future which rules most of North America. In the 1930s, both educational and storybooks for children in Germany taught their readers about the master race. In the Sun Co. science fiction series, the protagonist Co. says things like, My forefathers were Aryan, and in a story about Atlantis, he says, If our Atlantis once again rises out of the sea, then we will get from there the blonde, steel hard men with the pure blood and will create with them the master race, which will finally rule the earth. The German writer Michael Ende, who was born in 1929 and grew up reading such books, wrote his classic novel Jim Button and Luke the Engine Driver in the 1950s, as a way of opposing the Nazi propaganda he was taught. Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung writer Julia Voss wrote a book on Jim Button, uncovering Ende's many references to Nazi symbols in that book. Voss shows how Enda appends the Nazi belief that Atlantis was the original home of the Aryan race by creating his own submerged city and making it rise, but not to restore Aryan master race rule over the earth, rather it becomes a multi-racial paradise with Jim Button, who is black and a descendant of the Magi Casper, as its king. In the 1948 film Rope by Alfred Hitchcock, one of the central characters, Brandon Shaw, is a firm believer in the master race ideology. In Doctor Who, the Doctor's frequent enemies, the Daleks, consider the themselves a master race who must purge the universe of all others, Terry Nation explicitly modeled them on the Nazis. In the 2009 special The End of Time, when the master transforms the entire human race into copies of himself, he claims that there is no human race, but only 
The Master Race In the Harry Potter series, while the parallels were not originally intentional, there is much similarity between Voldemort's pureblood ideology and the Master Race ideology of the Nazis, with wizards being pure and anyone with muggle non -wizard blood being considered half blood or mudblood. A word treated the same way a racial slur would be treated in the real world neo-Nazis call non-white people mud people. <laughs> Footnotes <laughs> See also Model minority <laughs>